Hello, and welcome to the second video about how I made this jacket out of the McCall's 6818 pattern. In the last video, I made the fit sample, so now let's see how it fits. This is a really nice jacket pattern. The fit is just about dead on. Remember I went down a size when I cut this, so with all of the ease or roominess in the pattern, it ended up being just right. I put in a small shoulder pad on my left side to get a more intense villainous look. Without the shoulder pad, it's okay, but for a jacket like this, the extra structure looks really nice. Just be aware that adding a shoulder pad will raise the entire garment, so the bust and waist will be that much higher on your body. The collar looks like it will stand with some interfacing, so that's cool. The sleeve length is perfect with the extra half inch I gave it. The only thing to do now is fix the skirt length. I'll put it on a mannequin for this part. The skirt is a little long at the sides, but what's really bothering me is the way it kicks forward in the front. It doesn't hang straight down. So one way to fix that is to reshape the waist seam. I'm pinning up the side seam until the front hangs more straight. When this is reshaped, the gathering in the front will go away. I pinned the back skirt at the side seam too, but I think it looks better without the reshaping. One great resource for fitting advice is The Perfect Fit from Creative Publishing International. It covers a variety of fitting issues and a few ways to fix each one. Back at the pattern, I'm marking where I had pinned the skirt up. It's quite a bit, and there's not that much room in the pattern. I'm just going to straighten out the waistline a little bit. I measured across the original stitch line to see what measurement the new stitch line should match to. I have to trim some of the side seam away to get back to the right size. I'll also shorten the length a bit at the side. Then I can use the back panel to mark new notch placement and also shorten the length of the back side seam to match the front. Since I want to use the fit sample as my lining, I have to disassemble it a little bit. I'm going to take off the skirt, separate the front and back skirt panels, take off the collar and lapels, and I also want to take off the sleeves. There are so many ways to open a seam. One way is to snip the thread every five or six stitches and then pull at the unsnipped thread. The seam should just fall apart. Another way is to snip one of the threads 10 or 12 inches apart and pull it as though you were doing a gathering or easing stitch, but you pull it all the way out. And another way is to use snips or a razor blade to cut through the threads as you put tension on both sides. Once the pieces are apart, I press the seam allowances flat again and trim away the places that I altered. I ran the new raw edges through my serger and then stitched them back together. I want to add epaulettes, which are those little shoulder strap things, so I'm making a pattern for that. I want them to be one and a quarter inch wide and the shoulder is about four and a quarter inch long, so I'll make the epaulettes only four inches. I'm marking down a half inch on one end to bring it to a point. and then I can mark out the half inch seam allowances on all edges. Then I labeled it and cut it out. Now it's time for the sparkly goodness. This sequin fabric uses a mesh as the base fabric, so it's pretty unstable. It's also made with the sequins going in one direction, like the pile of fur or velvet. This is considered nap, and it means the fabric is going to look different if it's cut in one direction or another. I marked on the back what direction the sequins go, and I'll be sure to lay out my pattern pieces only in that direction. I'm cutting it really close on yardage, so I'm only going to mark out the fabric first. After all of my pieces are marked, I can cut out everything with a rotary cutter. This is going to pretty much destroy the blade, so I'll want to replace it after this. I'm also using a little vacuum to suck up all of this murder confetti. For the fake leather, this is probably a polyurethane coating on a polyester knit. I'm going to cut from the back side because I can see the grain line of the backing fabric. For the lapel pieces that need two cut from each side, I use a friction marker to tally off each one that I cut. After they're all cut, I can just erase the tally marks. Now we get experimental. I keep a variety of interfacings on hand, and I like to test a little swatch for each one to see what works best. 
Here I have what's called trico, which is a very fine knit, weft, which is a little heavier, and hair canvas, or hymo, that's woven, and it's very stable. I press for 5 to 8 seconds and check to see if it fused together. The polyurethane melted a little, so now I know 8 seconds is too long. I'm looking at how each interfacing makes the fabric look and perform, and I like the way the trico is standing on its own without being too rigid, so I'll cut my pattern pieces out of that. I'm fusing for just 5 seconds with steam, and then I rub the interfacing a little to see if it bubbles up. This one bubbled up, so it needs more time under the iron. That's better, the interfacing is fused and it's not going anywhere. One more thing needs interfacing, and that's the little front tabs. I'm marking the seam allowance on the pattern and folding it back. Now I'll cut an interfacing, let's go with weft this time. I'm fusing it onto the lining fabric because I don't think it'll stick to the sequins for very long. And the last thing I want to prepare is the shoulder pads. These shoulder pads are the best. They're made of layers of felt, so they're smooth under the garment, and they conform nicely to curves. I get these and all of my interfacings at Be Black & Sons. They're a great source for tailoring supplies. The easiest way to cover shoulder pads is to take a piece of lining fabric and put a shoulder pad on it diagonally, so the shoulder goes across the bias of the fabric. Fold the fabric over it, and trim away near the shoulder pad, but with enough room to play with the fabric a bit. I'm manipulating the fabric so that there's more on top and less on the bottom to help keep the curve of the shoulder pad, and pinning it as I go, adjusting the pins as needed. I'm going to sew just past the edge of the shoulder pad, and then run it through my serger to finish the edge. I'm giving it a quick press to smooth out the edge and to reinforce the curve. And that's all for this video. All of the prep work is done, so I'll start sewing the jacket together next week.